Jama Islamia, which translates to Islamic Congregation, is an Islamic militant group based in Southeast Asia. Sharing a similar ideology with groups like the Al-Qaeda and Taliban, JI is dedicated to establishing an Islamic state in Southeast Asia. To attain that, we need to fight for it. That's where jihad comes in. We need to fight for it to, to create the Islamic state. JI was responsible for numerous attacks, such as the Bali bombings and Jakarta bombings in Indonesia. JI is divided into several Matikis or territories based in Singapore, Malaysia, Indonesia, the Philippines, and Australia. Each Mantiki is divided into Wakalas or branches. The Singapore branch is subordinate to the Johor branch. Each branch comprises a missionary, economic, operations, security, and communications unit. The operations unit had knife yards or squads operating in Singapore and Johor. Each FIA has about four or five members. JI Singapore branch was established as early as 1993 and was led by Ibrahim Maidin, who underwent military training in Afghanistan. He conducted recruitment through religious classes in Singapore and arranged for JI members to undergo training in Afghanistan. At least eight JI members in Singapore had received training in Afghanistan. JI also had ties to other groups such as the Moro Islamic Liberation Front where at least four JI members received their training. JI also used adventure camps to target children and teenagers for recruitment. JI members operated in secrecy. For security measure, I don't straight away from A go. I will maneuver to whatever road to confirm that nobody is uh, following me. To be using dif different handphones and SIM cards, not registered our, under our name. They communicated using codes like the BMTDK code system. Bila, when. Masa, time. Tempat, place. Daripada, from who. Kapada, to who. So for instance, a string of numbers would mean the following. Following the September 11 attack, Singapore was on high alert. The Internal Security Department, Singapore's domestic intelligence agency, received a tip-off about a man named Aslam, a Singaporean with ties to Al-Qaeda. There were some alarm bells ringing in us, especially against the backdrop of 9-11. So we started to watch Aslam and his associates very closely. Aslam was placed under surveillance until he flew to Pakistan on the 4th of October. He was subsequently arrested in Afghanistan by the Northern Alliance. His interrogation revealed the Singaporean cell. On 8 of December, ISD conducted their first raid, arresting six JI members under the ISA. The Internal Security Act allows the preventive detention of suspects for internal security. A total of 13 suspects would be detained within the month. ISD officers seized all their belongings and began further investigations. So it really felt like we were trying to put together a 10,000 piece jigsaw puzzle, but the problem was that we do not know how it's supposed to look like in the end. Information gathered from the first wave of arrests allowed the ISD to launch a second operation in August 2002, detaining another 21 suspects. Some of the items confiscated include notes to make explosives, ingredients used to make explosives, books on military tactics, and a variety of weapons. JI had at least six different attack plans for various targets in Singapore, one of which was a plan to attack US military personnel from the US Navy's installation in Sembawang who were transported by a shuttle bus to Ishun MRT. I plan to place a bomb. They said, uh, you know, put it on a bicycle with a tree trunk as a support, at the back support, facing the line of you know, US military personnel waiting for the bus. We can trigger it remotely.
Another plan considered targeting infrastructures such as the PUB Woodlands Booster Station and water pipelines at Bukit Timah Nature Reserve. Other plans included attacking embassies of various countries, commercial buildings, as well as U.S. naval vessels in Singapore. Potential targets, just like U.S. embassies, American clubs. The main aim is to cripple the American economy and to put strike fear on them anywhere in the world. One particular plan even targeted Singapore's Ministry of Defence at Bukit Gomba. During the recon mission, the JI member followed a MINDEF officer from Bukit Gomba all the way to Tampines. JI had considered secretly planting explosives in the officer's car and detonating them after the car has entered the compound. Such a sophisticated and well-developed plans, it was a shock to us. That, uh, you know, that they were able to all do all these things with the help of uh, foreign terror organizations, Al-Qaeda for example. Following the revelation of the attack plans, the Gurkha contingent was deployed at various embassies in Singapore to enhance security. According to psychological profiling, 30% of the JI detainees had above average intelligence, including two with superior intelligence. One of Singapore's most wanted was MSK, who became the leader of JI Singapore branch since 1999. Following the first wave of arrests in 2001, Mas Salamat had planned to perform a retaliatory strike on Changi Airport. At the moment we were angered by the arrest of our JI members, and we want to retaliate the Singapore government at that very moment. We told them the idea is to hijack a plane, and crash into Changi Airport. On 27 February in 2008, MSK would escape ISD's custody. Ma Solomon escaped via a toilet window which did not have a grill. He had observed renovation work at the centre and when taken to a toilet in a new block, he noticed the window. Noting this lapse, he planned the escape, getting guards used to his routine of closing the toilet cubicle and turning on the tap. He also started hanging his pants over the cubicle door to deceive guards into thinking he was still inside. Singapore launched a massive manhunt involving personnel from the police and military. During his escape, Maslamat had received help from his relatives at Tampines who provided him with support such as food, money, a map of Singapore, and even a tudong for him to disguise as a woman. Subsequently, he fled to Malaysia using an improvised flotation device. Masalamat was recaptured by Malaysian authorities in April 2009 and extradited back to Singapore. As of today, Masalamat remains in detention and is undergoing religious rehabilitation via the RRG. Bila kita tanya mereka tentang jihad, jihad yang mereka pelajari Tak sama dengan kita memahami jihad. Out of the 56 detainees since 2002, only 4 remain in detention, either because they are hostile to ISD officers or still believed in armed jihad. <laughs>